Hi everybody. When you're working with shaded relief files, either DEMs or natural earth files, it can be hard to figure out what the output resolution will be or how to control it. This can happen at several stages. When working with the DEM files in QGIS, exporting the map to SVG format, and in Illustrator. Let's look at each of these steps. Note, in this video, I'm referring to the output resolution of shaded relief images, not the sampling resolution of the original data. Output resolution refers to the resolution in pixels per inch of your working file in Illustrator or Photoshop. It's what graphic designers normally think of as image resolution. The sampling resolution is the size of the areas being sampled by the satellite or other remote sensing device, such as 30 meters. See my spatial resolution for dummies video for more about this. A file with a sampling resolution of 30 meters can produce a file of any output resolution from 72 ppi to 600 ppi, for example. If you're creating maps for print publishing, I'll assume the output resolution of any file needs to be 300 ppi unless otherwise noted. Here's a NASA DEM file of Pennsylvania in QGIS. This data has a sampling resolution of 30 meters, which is pretty high. Here's the file after the hillshade procedure has been applied, along with my usual adjustments. Looks good. Now let's add a shapefile layer of the state boundary. That's all I'll do for now. For this example, I only need one vector layer. Next, I'll export the map using the normal export to SVG procedure. On the Layout tab, the export resolution is set to 300 dpi. Then I'll open the SVG file in Illustrator. I lowered the opacity of the vector layer so I could see things better. On the Links panel, you can see that the relief layer has two parts. QGIS does this with large raster files. You could join these into a single file in Photoshop, but that's usually not necessary. In this case, I only want to check the resolution of the shaded relief file, so I'll select one of the pieces and unembed it using the Links Palette menu. This saves it to your computer as a PSD file. I open the file in Photoshop to check the size and resolution. The resolution is only 72 ppi, but the file dimensions are really big, 27 inches wide, so we can trade size for resolution. If we uncheck the resample box and change the resolution to 300, the image width drops to 6.6 .6 inches. What does this mean? Is our relief file going to print at an output resolution of 72 ppi? No. At the size the relief file actually is in our Illustrator file, it's 300 ppi. Our map currently fits on a letter size page. At that size, the relief resolution is 300 ppi. If I wanted to print it at a larger size, scaling the map would reduce the resolution of the relief layer to less than 300 ppi. So how do you create a bigger map that has the correct resolution? There are two ways to do this. Here's the first method. Increase the export resolution in the print layout settings. Here I've increased the resolution to 600 ppi. When I output this file and opened it in Illustrator, I noticed that the link panel now shows 8 files instead of 2. That's because the resolution is much higher, so QGIS had to break the relief layer into more pieces. If I zoom in and compare the two files, the 300 ppi one and the 600 ppi one, the difference is clear. Now if I want to scale the map to a larger size, the resolution will still be at least 300 ppi. That's the easy way to increase the resolution of the relief layer. Here's the second method. Increase the page size in the QGIS print layout settings and leave the resolution at 300. Here are the steps. Create a new print layout as usual. Before you add the map, right click anywhere on the blank page and select Page Properties. This opens the Item Properties tab to show the page size, which is normally not visible for some reason. You can select a page size from the list or enter a custom size. Here I've entered a size for a tabloid page, 11 by 17 inches. Now you can add your map to the blank page as usual. On the Layout tab, I'll leave the export resolution at 300 and export the map as an SVG. 
When I open the file in Illustrator, the page is tabloid size and the resolution of the relief file is 300 ppi. If you need the map to be a specific size, this method saves you the trouble of scaling the map to fit and also guarantees that the final resolution will be 300 ppi. Natural earth shaded relief files of the entire earth are available in two scales, 1 to 10 million and 1 to 50 million. Within the 1 to 10 million scale files, two downloads are available for each type of relief. A large one, 21,600 by 10,800 pixels, and a medium one, 16,200 by 8,100 pixels. To give you a point of reference, the large files are 6 feet wide at 300 ppi, and the medium ones are 4.5 feet wide. If you're creating a map of the world, the medium ones are more than sufficient for most uses. It gets more difficult when you're using these files to show part of the world, such as a continent or single country. As a rule of thumb, if you're creating a map of the world or a continent, such as Africa or Europe, the medium-sized ones are usually sufficient. For large individual countries, if your map is of Canada, Russia, or China, for example, you should also be okay. For medium-sized countries, use the large files. Here are some examples. Here's Africa, cropped from one of the large size hypsometric files. When I check the image size, it shows 62 inches wide at 72 ppi. If I trade size for resolution by leaving the resample box unchecked and enter 300 for the resolution, I get an image width of about 15 inches. Depending on the size of the final map I'm creating, I could make that image bigger or smaller by a reasonable amount and still have sufficient resolution. Here's the same thing, this time using the medium size file. Now when I trade size for resolution, the resulting image is about 11 inches wide at 300 ppi. That's still big enough for most printed maps. After you set the resolution to 300 or whatever you need, check the resolution box and set the width or height to the final dimensions you need, then click OK. This will resize the image but keep the resolution the same. In the Africa example, using the large size natural earth file gives us more than enough resolution. Let's try this with a smaller area, the Korean Peninsula. If I check the image size, I can see that it's only 5 inches wide at 72 ppi. Not great. If I trade size for resolution, the width drops to 1.2 inches. Unless your map will be on a postage stamp, this image clearly won't work. This is where we meet the limits of what you can do with the natural earth files. For smaller areas like this, you'll have to go to open topography or another source to get your data and find another way to color it. Maps of the USA Since we're discussing the resolution of the natural earth files, I need to mention the US ones. Most of these are big enough that the output resolution shouldn't be a problem. Here's a summary. Physical map of North America this file also shows Canada, Mexico, and Central America. It's 45 inches wide at a resolution of 350 ppi. The conus part is about 25 inches wide at 350 ppi. It's a geotiff, so it can be used in QGIS. Plan Oblique Relief Map of the U.S. This map is 41 inches wide at 300 ppi. In my opinion, this is the best looking shaded relief of the U.S., but it's not a geotiff, so you can't use it in QGIS. Physical map of the contiguous U.S. This map is 45 inches wide at 300 ppi. It's a geotiff, so it works in QGIS. 100 meter natural earth map. This map is so detailed that the U.S. comes in two parts, eastern and western halves. At 300 ppi, the western half alone is 7 feet wide. This file is really too detailed for any map of the U.S. unless you need it to be huge, but can be a good choice for maps of individual states. 1 to 10 million manual shaded relief. This is a grayscale relief that's 42 inches wide at 300 ppi. It's a geotiff, so it works in QGIS. If you're creating a map of the U.S. and don't want to use one of the colored versions, use this one. Choosing between DEMs and natural earth files. If you're creating a map with shaded relief, should you use a DEM or a natural earth file? Here are some factors to consider. 
Area. This one is pretty easy. For maps of the world or large parts of it, continents, Canada, China, or Russia, use natural earth files, either the grayscale one or one of the colored ones. For maps of the entire U.S., Alaska, or Hawaii, use natural earth. There are 100 meter files for Alaska and Hawaii. For maps of other countries, U.S. states, and anything smaller, use DEMs. Speed. Natural earth files are ready to use. You don't have to look for data and process it through QGIS. You can find DEM datasets that cover the U.S. and world, but there's no point in doing that. It would take forever. The natural earth files have been professionally optimized and will produce a better result. Practicality. It's possible to create a shaded relief for the United States or other large country using 30 meter or 90 meter data from open topography, but doing so would be insane. Why? You'd have to download a huge number of files, pull them all into QGIS, and merge them into a single file. This file would be so big that I doubt anything short of a supercomputer could handle it. The 100 meter natural earth file already has to split the US into two pieces just to download it. Check out my designer's guide to creating great maps at the mapguide.net slash guide and download two free chapters. That's all for now. See you next time.